Well, uh, I miss batting, yes. It was the best thing I ever did. I can't do that. Uh, I'm actually pretty okay. I've enjoyed the cricket. Uh, it's not the same, I accept, without people. I watch it, I still enjoy it, I love it. I'm not one of those cricketers who's, you know, after they've played a lot, they, they've had enough of it and don't want to know. I just love it. Yeah, I'm pretty well, as far as I know. I haven't got COVID. Um, I try to be sensible. My mind is as sharp as ever. I watch the cricket and see things are going to happen. Um, but unfortunately, at 80, you can't do all the things you'd like to have done. I, I walk a mile and a half uh, briskly about uh, three times a week on my running machine. I hit some golf balls in the garden. I've got a net and a bit of AstroTurf. Biggest mistake, I suppose, is not marrying Rachel earlier and having two more daughters like my Emma. She's been a breath of fresh air, no real trouble. She's been absolute great. She's got a a son now, Joshua, he just had his birthday party, one end of September, he's good. I'd love to believe in God, and I'd love to believe in that there's a hereafter, there's a heaven. Uh, but I can't. You know, you look around, there's so many people with terrible sicknesses and ailments. And I find that very distressing. And I just think, well, if there was a God, surely he wouldn't let all these people suffer. For those people who do believe, I'm pleased for them. But I find it, it, it very difficult. I, uh, look, I've been to Martin House Hospice in our village, try and support them a bit with different things. And that's a hospice for children. We're not gonna live, they're not gonna have a life. And there's rooms nearby for their mothers to stay for their last few nights. And I tell you what, you go there and then when my back's bad and when I'm not feeling great, you think, hang on, <laughs> just think of those kids. Well, they sacrifice quality for equality. When you work for them, you, you're wary and frightened to say anything. It's a minefield out there. And that's, that's sad. That's really sad. Long after I'm dead, there'll be a government come along of whatever and will take away the BBC funding and they'll have to go private. They'll have to go out into the real world like others do, like ITV, like Sky, because it's at the top. I don't think it's run particularly well. I think it can limp along in all the countries but England and Australia, they're different. They get big crowds, a lot more money. But in the other countries, they've been struggling for a long time with crowds and getting money, you know, making it pay. And I think it may limp along for another maybe 10 years. But after that, it can't carry on in the same fashion. We have to concertina the five days into four. We have to get them bowling more overs. The overs have gone down over time. 20 odd overs an hour used to be. I played under 17 overs an hour, 19 in county cricket. We can't get 15 overs in six hours and there should be some serious penalties by saying we're going to bowl 100 overs a day and you're going to bowl 16 overs an hour. I don't care what you do, but you're going to get a move on. We've got to make it more entertaining for the public. So you don't change any of the, the shape of the ball, the bats, the length of the pitch, uh, height of the stumps, the width of the stumps, you don't do anything. That touch the ethos of the game. You just concertina it a bit, make it happen a little bit. Most kids are growing up wanting to play 2020, to slug it out the park for six. And as you, me, middle class, older people die, if then all the young kids only want 2020, test cricket is, is going to struggle.